Hello and welcome to another video. This time we're going to be talking a little bit more about characters uh, in general or classes for Mythic Story 2. Uh, I know this is a little bit uh, too late because most of you have probably picked your classes, etc. But uh, let's go on with the video. So I made a post recently. Yes, it's 7:16 a.m. or whatever when I posted it. Uh, it's roughly like 8 now. But uh, we've been talking about uh, benefits with having multiple classes, so I know there's a lot of people that prefer having only one character or main one character, that's perfectly normal. But uh, let's talk about the system in MapleStory 2. So in MapleStory 2, when you do dungeons, you have a limit of getting loots. Uh, so the loots that you get is based off a limit, which is 10 times per day and 30 times uh, per week. So once you got that 30 uh, runs or 30 daily, daily dungeons, uh, or once you have gotten your 30 dungeons done for the week, you're pretty much capped out with your character. You can't get any loot anymore. However, you are gonna get, you're still gonna get XP and missiles for completing it or helping your friends. But you can uh, bypass that if you have ult. So this game really benefits or. It uh, gives you a lot more uh, variety to the game if you prefer playing with you know different characters. Uh, you are probably gonna progress a bit slower if you plan on you know uh, sending all your materials that you get or rewards that you get uh, to one character and boost it, or you can play it equally and just you know play however you want as you want with the game. But uh, talking about that, we got uh, six character slots. Uh, you get 9 in total if you purchase um, on Head Start or official launch. So that means 30 dungeons per week is gonna result in 270 dungeons per week if you have 9 characters to play with. In my opinion, I feel like having just one extra ult is already enough because I really have enough time to play. I'm more of the casual side than the hardcore side. So 60 dungeons a week is pretty okay for me and I can focus on playing you know, on two characters that I enjoy playing with. Uh, as for daily, that's gonna be 90 instead, because you have 9 characters for example, then uh, 10 daily dungeons on one character, then you jump on to your next character and so on and so on. Uh, regarding chaos raids, this is an individual raid loot system, it's not included into the uh, dungeon clear. So well, the dungeon clear is basically once you, we get chaos raids, which is in November, uh, dungeons uh, is gonna be the place where you farm for your alt, farm you know the extra materials that you need to upgrade. While the raid loot is basically what you want to aim for as a main game uh, PVE build, I guess. And I'll be covering up a little bit more later on. There's a question mark there. Um, it's a little bit unclear. Of, I don't really have the right information about it, but you know I'm going based off what uh, the comment has said and what I've experienced when I played in close beta too. So benefit with having multiple characters, you get to play different classes. Obviously, um, it's pretty good to you know if you're new to the game, you want to try out different characters. You know, uh, recommendation would be 50 on each, uh, just to see you know how they feel in end game. Ish, and you know, from low level to the high level, which one do you prefer playing with? Um, and then, of course, for the people that enjoy collecting trophies, achievements, uh, having multiple characters will benefit you. You get more trophy points, uh, leveling each class to 30, 40, and 50. Uh, there's this mode called Dark Descent, which I've covered up before in Close Beta 2. You get more entries to it, or you get to have access to it. Uh, with multiple characters. Abandoned Mind, uh, B1 and B4, you get more entries to enter them. Uh, it's probably not going to bother you that much because um, identifying these rusty keys is going to cost a lot of mesos and doing 10 times on each character it's going to cost a lot of mesos so don't worry about that one. But if you do plan on you know trying to play or do the Abandoned Minds uh, doing it with multiple characters might have a benefit for you because um, I think the uh, price will change depending on the character on the amount of uh, identifying 
you have, you have done in Trio. So, yeah, I guess that's a benefit, but it's not really a big deal with the Abandoned Mine. Uh, more inventory space without expanding with Merits. You uh, usually have not enough um, Merit or inventory space. So with this, you can bank and store your items, have it in um, in your alts instead, and then you transfer them over so you don't have to expand it on one character. That way, you save some merits, you know, you have extra bank slots, I guess, but on your alts. Uh, unique die. So, you see the image here, you've probably been watching or is, while you're listening to me, you've been you know, trying to look at the uh, image here and having 50, uh, level 50 character on 8 different jobs or classes will net you the pure white guy and if you are aiming for the color or whatever that you really need or want uh, you obviously need to level up uh, 8 characters to 50 and my recommendation for that would be leveling the basic or the official starter classes uh, so it's Knight, Berserker, Wizard, Priest, Archer, Heavy Gunner, Thief and Assassin and because I was recommending that, it's because of the extra hair, uh, hair color dye or gear dye. You get uh, two additional ones for each class. Uh, I know you main play, uh, main rune bladers uh, probably don't want to do this or whatever, but um, they this is based off the uh, patch before rune blades comes out. So we might be seeing some rune blader um, in the list as well or in the trophy list and if that's gonna be out then you know we get one extra character to uh, unlock more uh, more colors so now that we're done with the benefits of having multiple characters uh, I would like to put some uh, insight of my classes and uh, my insight for each class is based off what I feel like it's most useful for uh, a raid, for example, if you want to have the best team comp, I would say. Uh, so having a knight, obviously, or two is really good. They debuff and protect for the raid. As a priest, you kind of want to have at least one healer, and a priest can buff the party member with the holy symbol. Um, Archer is one of the few DPS classes that can buff for the party. Uh, they place the sharp eye, which gives them critical hit rate up. I don't believe it's accuracy as well for the raid. And uh, for Wizard, that's the second class or DPS class that has a party buff that increases physical and magic damage for the raid. And they also make that useful for different mechanics in raids, for example elemental damage with ice, fire and lightning. Some uh, enemies does have like uh, weak to elemental resistances, like uh, for example in Chaos Leverack you had um, fire and ice. Uh, adds and usually you need to have one wizard with you to uh, counter that. Uh, as for assassin, uh, it's one of the main sustained DPS class out there. The pretty good, pretty you know, as Maple Story one, really good class to just DPS. They also have a debuff if you spec into that that uh, will be available at level thirty. Uh, available at thirty percent of the boss health. Um, when the boss is reaching to 30% remaining health, you, he will take uh, increase more damage. So that is more of a clutch moment, I guess, when you want to DPS faster or harder uh, with the time limit that you have in Chaos Raid. So Assassin is a pretty good solid choice as a ranged DPS that you can bring with you. Uh, Heavy Gunner, uh, similar to Assassin and Archer when it comes to ranged DPS, they have the sustain there. Uh, they do uh, are situational. Uh, in Chaos Leverack, you have a mechanic where you needed to jump up on uh, trees and uh, kill the ads. But with a heavy gunner, you could use their homing missiles or homing rockets, uh, do a jump and combine that, and their rockets will fly up and attack or kill them. So that saves some time for the uptime on DPS, uh, leaving the heavy gunner to do all the uh, mechanical parts uh, of the fight. So that's a plus for that. Um, as for Thief, also one of the sustained DPS class. High skill ceiling uh, in comparison to other DPS because a lot of people in this community are you know, saying that Thief is the underdog uh, and 
for me, I feel like anyone that enjoys playing Thief and you can do well with the DPS, you're gonna be accepted. Don't think about you know what people are saying like. Uh, we're not gonna invite the thieves for raid, blah blah blah. And it's all about you know how well you are playing yourself. If you can survive all the time and DPS a lot, that's a plus for you. So if you enjoy thieves gameplay, go for it. And obviously, Awakening will come out eventually in the future. We're gonna see a lot more diversity of you know which classes are gonna be good for uh, or balanced out for the raids. Um, Berserker can be seen as off tank, but it's a DPS class. Uh, the good part with it is that it has a life drain or life steal skill. Uh, you drain, and uh, you obviously, for example, in Balrog dungeon, uh, when you need ranged and healer to take care of the adds, your Berserker, for example, could face the boss or face Balrog downwards or south and uh, keep him aggro on you. You DPS the boss while you keep yourself alive with the life drain. Uh, so that's a good perk of Berserker. Uh, you, do have, you do have a burst and sustain DPS with the spin, with the ground breaker. So definitely my favorite class out of there. But you know, when it comes to the raid utility, you're more of the DPS class only, and not uh, for the utility of getting hyper party buffs such as Archer or Wizard. Uh, Runeblader, last class that we'll be speaking of, because it's going to be released uh, on official launch. Uh, it's an elemental melee DPS. Um, I'm going to put it as similar category as Wizard. Uh, if you don't want to have a Wizard in your party, if you feel like they're performing less uh, DPS, uh, then go for Runeblader, because they might be quicker with the damage, and they have elemental uh, with them to deal with you know, elemental uh, enemies or adds minions uh, so that's my insight of Runeblader I don't know uh, if they do have any party buffs or anything I do know they have a lot of um, in self buffs for themselves so they're literally a DPS machine but elemental but yeah uh, if you do happen to drop by the uh, uh, forums feel free to comment if you have anything else that I missed out that I have covered up right now or leave a comment in on the YouTube comment section obviously um, and obviously the uh, part that I forgot to mention is the raid loot um, at the end you can uh, you can have more runs obviously you're obviously not gonna get the loot uh, once you reach the limit, as any other dungeon system that they have in current MapleStory. Uh, so if you do want to help up your friends with raid, etc., you can still do that. You can still do that with your guild, you can do that with your randoms, or help people out in pugs. Uh, but someone mentioned uh, you get four clears per week, so four loots per week. That's about eight loots, I believe. Uh, yeah, anyways, four, four loots per week per character. So if you have multiple characters, and if you gear them up, all of them, uh, you can gear them up, uh, doing 36 loot per week in total then. Uh, the only thing that's a downside with the loot from Raid is that it's uh, bound on character, or bound on loot. Uh, so anything that you get, uh, is gonna be bound to you. But if you're not liking the item, you can always crush them down, or dismantle it get some gemstones, but as well as shards that you can collect uh, to get a guaranteed weapon or armor piece uh, once you've done that. Um, yeah, and of course, mentioning as the... I forgot to mention the uh, part um, with the character slots. Uh, since the trophies are account bound, you can delete your characters uh, once you reach level 50 with the character. Uh, however, I would not recommend doing that right now. If you plan on playing in the long term, they might increase you know, the amount of trophies, for example, reaching level 60, 70, 80, 90. Uh, and you probably might see some of them being uh, class-based. And keeping your character would be recommended, but you can also, if you want to, if you don't really care about certain characters uh, or classes, you can delete once you reach level 50 and you unlock the uh, trophies and just make a new one. So you save on merits doing that. But otherwise, that's it. That's all I have to 
say for this video. Thank you very much for watching and uh, hopefully this will help you uh, pick your class that you want or make an alt for. Uh, the top four is my recommendation for raid utility. The rest is basically DPS classes. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys uh, on the head start on October 1st.